I was born in Hamilton, Victoria, and when I was young, growing up, my goal in life was to run my own business. When we were kids, we used to talk about shops and businesses and so on, and, and my goal was to be able to run my own successful business. 1976, I was, I was living in Bendigo, and a mate of mine, David Blaine, was in Melbourne, and he said, well, if you're not sure what you want to do in life, why don't you come down, to, down here and um, try real estate? And came to Melbourne, uh, and within a week working with David, I knew this was the industry that I wanted to be in. Housing was in great demand in, then, as it still is today. And so I had a product that I could um, uh, have confidence in that I was always, if I had a good house to sell, I was going to be able to find a buyer. I realised that I could put my skills in banking and finance and administration to use in running a business. And obviously the key thing was that uh, in running a business that you have to have a good product and you have to have something where you can have other people working with you because you need to be able to replicate your own efforts. You can't do it all yourself. I mean, one-man businesses are very good, but if you really want it to grow, you have to have good people working with you. I remember the first sale. Um, I started with David on a, a Monday, and on the following Saturday, I did my first open for inspections at a property in Mount Waverley, not far from the office, and it was off Waverley Road, and I remember going round there and showing people through, and uh, by the end of the uh, inspections, uh, I'd made a sale. So I walked back into the office an hour after I left and said, David, I've made my first sale. And uh, that was the clincher, I think, that said, well, this is the business that I want to be in. And I remember saying to myself, how good's this industry? I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed dealing with the people. And uh, uh, they were seeking to buy a house. They were happy with the product they got. They're happy with the service that I gave them. So it was a win-win for everybody. I'm not sure what the price was in those days in Mount Waverley, I really don't. I could probably tell you when I moved to open my own business later on, I got the prices from then, but it was probably in the early 20,000s or somewhere around there. It might have been around about $20,000, I'd suggest. And an opportunity came up in an office in Glen Iris. A company called Williams & Co, which was on the corner of High Street and Malvern Road, Glen Iris, were looking for a salesman. So I knew the territory pretty well, and I thought this would be a good spot for me. So I went and um, started as a salesman at Williams & Co in Glen Iris. About six months after I started there, I started doing my real estate agent's licence at night school. And uh, um, the building that we were working out of came up for sale. It was a real thrill when I opened up my own office. And within about two months, I put on a salesman. And in those days, it was very unusual for anybody to open up a brand new office, a new name on the inner suburbs. And Glen Iris and Malvern and those were the inner suburbs. And when I started off, I was told by so many people, well, if you want to open up, go out to Glen Waverley, Mount Waverley, where there's abundance of land, there's so many new people out there, there's no allegiance to any agent. Well, I thought, well, I'll open Glen Iris and see how it goes. I knew I'd be successful there, but I thought I, I need to grow a little bit as well. There was a real estate business in the corner of Burke and Turak Road called Clark and Westcott, and there was a rumour that they were going to sell it. So I went over and saw them and I approached them and said, well, look, if you're going to sell, I'll, I'll buy. Inner agents, when we started off, really didn't think we'd do much, but it didn't take long before we were making good inroads into their business. One of the advantages of not having been in real estate previously was that we didn't know how things should be done and why things were particularly done in a certain way. So we we're always querying it and thinking, well, can we do it better? And Mike and I especially would sit down and say, well, what can we do that's a little bit different? And we came up with many ideas that would change the way real estate was operating. One of the things that we did when we started to grow was that uh, with franchises we ran all the backroom work for the franchisees. 
So all they had to do was list and sell real estate rather than doing the book work and pay the bills and all those sort of things. We ran an administrative service for them. By 1983, uh, we had three very successful officers. And I believed that if I wanted to stay within the industry, I had to change the model that I was working under and make the business grow. Set up a franchise or company and we embarked upon a growth over the next few years. Not necessarily in this order, but we opened in Armidale and South Yarra. Uh, when we got to the South Yarra one, we actually bought a building in South Yarra and uh, moved our corporate offices into that, and as well as running a, a sales division downstairs. We opened Carnegie, Elstonwick, Caulfield, Richmond and Clifton Hill, and eventually then Baldwin and Box Hill, Blackburn, and for a very short period of time, Doncaster. There was a period, period of terrific growth for us. And David Gillam, who joined the company as a salesman at Glen Iris in 1984, joined Mike at Camberwell and eventually bought the business from Mike when he sold out about three or four years ago. I sold out in 1996. One of the strong beliefs I have always had was that if you give people an opportunity to do something themselves, they'll do it really well. If they really want it, they'll do it well. Well, dealing with customers, whether they be vendors or purchasers, was really important. And we used to do a lot of training. In fact, we were one of the first companies to conduct regular training sessions for our people. We'd have training sessions every week. And we always believed that we needed to uh, give them the opportunity so that when they're out in the field, they're going to present themselves as best they can, best for the company and best for the client, the whole thing. So training was very, very important for us. I'm really delighted that it has continued on and it's now 40 years old. And I'm proud of the fact that I started something off 40 years ago that's still a viable business today.